If we had our Bibles and we were to go back to our home daily Bible reading, we will start our lesson at verse number 13 in chapter number 4. Amen. Paul is there to encourage the Gentile saints, the non-Jews. Many of us are not Jews, but we are saved by faith through grace. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. By the end of the text, amen. A lot of people don't know what to shout about in church. They shout about cars, they shout about houses. Amen. But nobody seems to shout about having eternal life. Something that the devil can take. Amen. What we're supposed to shout about, amen. You may lose a house, you may lose a car, you may lose a job. But the devil can't take my eternal life. A lot of that's tied to me being a seed of Abraham. Amen. This text here lets me know that a promise supersedes the law. Amen. A promise, a promise, a promise. Somebody said, well, who was Abraham in history? His name was Abram. He was a worshiper of the moon. Amen. Abram, Abram, before his name was changed to Abraham. Amen. Abram, family, Abram was a Gentile. He was the father, the originator of all Jews and the Jewish nation. Amen. God made Abraham a promise. Amen. If you have faith or you believe in me, amen, I will make your seed outnumber the stars. I will make your name great. And I promise you, I'm going to give you the promised land, Canaan, and the whole world. There were no Jews before Abraham. So Abraham wasn't a Jew. Abraham is known as the father of many nations. Yeah. Amen. Many religions, many nations. If you go over there and you have a dispute about religion, I'm going to tell you a secret. Just call out the name Abraham. Uh -huh. Oh man, Muslims and Islams and everybody will stop and say, we know him. Uh -huh. yeah. He's the father of our religion, Abraham. Uh -huh. Father Abraham, father Abraham. Everybody knows Father Abraham. Me and uh, one of my, uh, one of my nephews, we were in a bowling alley, and, and, and some people from uh, I forget the name of the nation, the Sudan. They were in there. They were dressed in their national attire. Amen. They were celebrating, celebrating the offering of Isaac by Abraham. They had a celebration. They would take their children out and they would celebrate that day. Amen. And my, my nephew was asking, he said, I wonder, I wonder what religion they are. I wonder where they're from. I wonder what they worship. So we got one pulled over to the side. And he said, hey, where are you from? He said, I'm from the Sudan. He said, I'm one generation out. I'm one generation out. My yeah, parents yeah. came from there. But I was born here. I can speak the language and I can understand the language. But my son, he can only hear it, but he can't speak yeah. You understand this son would have been two generations out from being over in the Sudan. Amen. But he was telling us, I said, uh, he was talking about religion and he was talking about what they were worshiping, that the Isaac had offered up his son and they decided to celebrate children on that day. And, amen. And then I just threw in an extra word. I said, hey, what about Abraham? He said, Father Abraham. You know Abraham? I said, yes, sir. I know Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a tie. That's a tie. Abraham is a tie. Amen. My nephew asked, he said, how did you know that I said that around, son? <laughs> Some of everybody all over the world know Abraham, and he is in their religious articles back from way back. Yeah. Amen. You want to get on the same page and start a friendly dialogue, say, hey, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. Amen. Just, just wanted you to know that so you could get in the conversation. Amen. Amen. Well, what about Abraham and our Christian faith? Abraham is very important. Important. Amen. Abraham is very important. Amen. Why? Because God made a promise to Abraham. Before the law of Moses was given, there was a promise. 
God promised Abraham something, and to his seed, uh, he promised an inheritance. Yes, sir. Oh, so let's go there. Verse number 13, chapter number 4. For the promise, I told you a promise, that he should be the heir of the world. Abraham is going to inherit the world. Well, Amen. Look at, come on, come on. Was not only to, it was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Can I just work on that one verse just for a moment? Yeah. God made Abraham a promise to inherit the world, be heir to the world. I mean, he's, he's going to inherit it. He's an heir, heir to the world, not by the law. Uh -huh. So, so he said, Abraham, this ain't gonna come through the law. Who is who is explaining this to us, Paul? Paul is going back into the Old Testament right. to to show us as Christians how it applies to us. Well, see, see, some of us you can't go in the Old Testament because y'all read other people's mail and you you relate everything in there to you in the wrong way. The Old Testament was a letter to Israel and to the Jews. And we have to look at the Old Testament through New Testament eyes. All right. All right. That means the New Testament has to tell us how to look at what he was saying to them and how to apply it to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, I heard a preacher this morning, he, he was saying, he was using an example. He said, why would I send my wife a letter that I, I, why would I send her a letter I sent to Brother Young to tell my wife something? I sent a letter to Brother Young to, to tell my wife something. Right. That's, that, that's not good. How come I can't just speak to my wife? Right. Hey, let's send him a letter to him that I'm hoping she gonna read. <laughs> that's what it is. We read other people's mail and then say, God, what are you saying to me? Paul has to tell us how it applies to us. Amen. So he says, uh, Abraham, Abraham and his seed, you're not going to inherit based on the law. Yeah. The law of Moses, who ain't even came yet. Yeah. The, but Paul is explaining it to us. The law ain't even got here yet, so you're not receiving your inheritance because of some law in numbers or somewhere. Yes, oh, y'all talking. Because you know everything by the law. And, and, and he, uh, come on. All right. He says, For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. What is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God. All right. So when you say you're righteous, then you mean you're in right relationship with God. He said, your inheritance is going to come based on your right relationship with God through righteousness of faith. Faith is something of things uh, hoped for, evidence of things not seen. He said, faith is what's going to make you right in right standing with God. Speaking to things that be not as though they were. That's what's going to put you in right relationship with God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you can't be in right relationship with God without faith. And you can't keep the law for the Bible says all have sinned and come short of being in right relationship with God. You can't be perfect by the law. You can't be justified. Justified means made right with God. Righteousness and justification is almost the same word. Justified means being found in right relationship. Yes, so you, you, he says, Abraham, the law doesn't get you the inheritance. All right. Well, but righteousness through faith. For it may, 14, for if they which were of the law 
be heir or could inherit the promise, yes, faith would be no good. It'd be void. He said, listen to Paul talking to the Gentile Christians. He laid down the evidence. He said, now, God made a promise. Uh -huh. If you could get the inheritance by the law, that would make faith, which put you in right relationship with God, no good. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Okay, listen, listen, come on, let's go a little further. So, so, so if God made a promise, why did he make a promise? Uh -huh. If he don't make a law. <laughs> Watch this. Faith is made of void, and the promise made of no effect. He said, what good is a promise if he don't guarantee you something by law? When I promise you something, uh -huh. I can go on a handshake. You ain't got the signature for evidence or nothing. Yeah. I promise I'm going to pay you, brother. Mm -hmm. I promise. I don't have a contract. I don't have a car to put up for it. I don't have a house to, to put up for the loan you're giving me. I don't have anything but my what? Word. He said, if God's word is not good, if God's word is no good, if, if, if he said, he said, if God's word ain't no good, faith ain't no good, if, if the promise ain't no good, what's good is faith? It's just an empty promise. Watch this. Come on, come on, let's go a little further. Verse 15 says, because the law worketh wrath, God's name. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Can I unwrap that for you? Yes, come on, come on, come on, the law shows us what God doesn't like. So we know that we can't keep the law. We fall what? Short. And because we fall short, it makes God what? Angry. Yes, sir. The law shows us that. Without the law, we wouldn't know that. Amen. Amen. For the law gives us knowledge of sin. Amen. If there was no law, there would be no sin. That's, right. <laughs> That's the second part of the earth. You didn't read it? It says, for where no law is, there is no transgression. You, you, can't, you can't break the law if there wasn't no law. If, if 35 wasn't the speed limit, you couldn't break going over 35 because it ain't no law. Yeah. Where there is no law, there is no transgression. But if there is a law and you break it, it makes God angry. Oh. We're gonna go now. We're gonna go now. You Gentiles, you Gentiles now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Therefore, it is of faith. That is that that it might be by grace. Yes, sir. That means that God's unlimited faith. God can give you a gift whenever you want to give it to you. Not by the law, not that you deserve it, just because God wants to do it. There are some things that God just wants to do because of his love for us. We don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. You didn't earn getting up this morning. No, you didn't earn that. Right? You didn't do enough. To, to, to validate God getting you up. Matter of fact, you broke enough laws in your sleep not to deserve to get up this morning. Oh, you dreamed about enough stuff. You were covered enough stuff in your dream. Because the Bible says, as a man thinking, so is he. So if you thought it, you messed up, it did not against the will of God. Oh, you see it yet, you ain't seen it yet. You're going to hope you ever see it like you do. <laughs> so therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Seed are children, y'all. Seed are generations, y'all. This seed here is not money. This seed is flesh. That come from, you know, this one, that one, Abraham, him and his wife, knew his wife, and they had this one, and they had that. Them seeds. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Them seeds, them seeds. So, so the problem may be sure to all the seeds. 
not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Faith of who? Abraham. Those who are of the faith of Abraham. So, he said the promise is sure to all of them that's the seed of Abraham. They have the same kind of faith of who? Abraham. Uh -huh. So now I got to understand how I can be of the same faith as Abraham uh -huh. in order to be counted in the seed. Yes, sir. Not to Abraham. Let me see here. Come with glasses here. Not to that only which is of the law. The law would dictate. Okay, the law says uh, the wife gets the cows, the children can get a third of whatever. Uh -huh. The wife gets a third, and the rest of them got to split all the rest of it. The law said this, and the law said this, and that. And you got to go to probate court. Uh -huh. The law said, the law, the law, the law, the law. Uh -huh. Promise said. You ain't got to go by the law yeah. if you can see yourself as being in the seed of Abraham. Uh -huh. And the way to be in the seed of Abraham, you have to have the faith, faith of Abraham. Because yeah. not only will those by the law inherit, but also those who are of the faith, faith of, of Abraham. And his name means father of many nations. nations. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. Okay, okay. Watch, 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 watch closely, watch closely, watch closely. It says, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Who is Paul talking to? Gentiles in Rome who are not Jews. He said, Abraham is father of us all. Yes, sir. All right. People have trouble with this. Verse 17, it says, as it is written, as it is written, I have made you, Abraham, a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Abraham, you know what kind of faith you got? You got the, the kind of faith to call things that be not as though they were. Here comes an example of that. Here he comes. You don't want to know you can see the Abraham. Are you living by faith? Are you living by faith? Are you just living by what you can see? Do you have any hope? Hope got a bad name. Hope, I'm hoping I'm praying. I am hoping I'm praying. I have desires. Amen. To be in the will of God. I have a desire to want to live eternal life with him who made me. I have a desire. That's a hope. Amen. And a prayer. For faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things unseen, not seen. Calling things that be not as though they were. Looking at a bad situation and saying, it's all good. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, we're coming, we're coming. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming. Come on in here. So Abraham, he said, now, you believe even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not though they were. God, you were able to raise the dead. Uh -huh. Question, who against hope, verse 18, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God because God promised, he said, that's Sarah. Right, yeah. Abraham, he said, Abraham, I promise you. You gonna be the father of many nations. Yes, Abraham, a hundred years old, All right. can't even lift five pounds. All right. What are you gonna do? Amen. I'm gonna be the father of many nations. In order to do that, I gotta do something. I gotta be able to perform, man. I ain't performed in years. Right. Oh, Lord. He said, not even looking at the deadness of his own body. He hoped against hope. He said, now nah, I know my body dead physically by myself. I ain't able to do this. But God promised. Yeah. 
He said, God promised what God promised outweighs what I see. That's F A C T S says that this is not possible. Facts say that I'm at a hundred. I ain't about to be having no children. And I know my wife's womb is dead and dry and ain't no good, ain't no flow down no more. I know I shouldn't be. Can't fact say it's not possible, but because God promised. I'm going to call this thing that be not. Facts say no, but God said yes. Facts say no, God said yes. Facts say no house, God says give me a house. Facts say no promotion, God says give me a promotion. Facts say. Lady told me in the hospital once a child was laying terminally ill and said, Preacher, you need to go and tell the family. Baby's going to die. Oh. I said, that ain't my job. I, I don't get paid to do that. My job is to be on the side of faith. Oh. Even though the facts say, go in and talk to the family. But God can turn the facts around. Abraham, verse 18, who against hope believed in hope? Who against hope believed in hope? Who against hope believed in hope? That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. All those people who can do it like that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My Lord, my Lord. Okay. So he staggered not. He said, if God promised that standard, yeah. it's going to happen. Amen. That's what he said. But he said, if God said it, that standard, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to walk in. All right. I'm going to walk in. My Lord. Yeah. You got to walk in. Yeah. I'm going in the bedroom tonight, something's going to happen. <laughs> I'm going in. Yeah. I'm going in. Yeah. I'm a hundred, but I'm going in. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I'm coming in the bedroom, baby. Get ready. I'm coming in. I'm coming. God promised it's going to happen. Hey, hey. All right, Donald. Stagnant not at the promises of God. Stagnant not. You know, I come every Sunday. You know, I, I, I don't know who's going to be here. Uh, and I don't know who the word is going to go out to. But I'm not going to stab at the promises of God. Hey, hey, hey. I don't know how to do it, but God knows. And God promised. God said his word is going to go out. Amen. To the end of time. Amen. If I have to stand here by myself, I'm not going to stand there. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you said, Sister Yellow? Yeah. You said if you fall in the pocket like this, it's going to bring me a carriage on into the church. Amen. And the Lord made it so you can walk on in here. Praise God. Because you stand or not as a promise. Yeah. Yeah. Then verse 21 says, Abraham, he said, and being fully persuaded that what? God had promised he was able also to perform it. See, you got to believe that even if you don't do it, that God is what? Able to do it. The problem with many of us is we don't believe that God is what? Able. That's the kind of faith Abraham had. He said, I believe God is able to perform what he said. If God promised it, I believe God can do it. It ain't up to me. Quit giving it, quit putting it on yourself. It ain't up to you. Is God able? Do you believe God is able? Do you believe God can put water in dry places? Do you believe God can put food on an empty table? Do you believe? God, you don't make me do it. You got Abraham say he was fully persuaded. He, he didn't try to reference God. He, he 
might not be able to do this. Uh -huh. God, they said, they said the monitor is going to stop. They gave me three days. But don't you understand? God is able. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Thank you. I know the facts. Uh -huh. Well, Abraham knew the facts. F-A-C-T-S. He knew the facts. But he hoped against the facts. You know how you sit there and you know you ain't got a job, you know, ain't no more food in the cabin and you're about to run out and you ain't got no paycheck coming in and you sit there looking at the cabin but you feel praying to God. You know what we need and you know I don't have it. And the facts show that if a man don't work, he should not eat. But God, I'm praying to you today. And God wake up somebody put it on their heart to bring a box of food right into your doorstep. Knock right on your door. And say, look, I was thinking about you today. And I just want to bring you this little package over here. Yes, sir. Yes. First thing the devil said, that wasn't God, that was Sister Sailor. <laughs> well, Sister Sailor got in God. Yeah. God got in Sister Sailor. Yeah. I want you to see something here. Watch what happened. Watch what happened to Abraham. He staggered down. He was persuaded. And then it says, and, and he believed God could do it. Well, he knew when it wasn't done. He said, God, you're able to do it. And therefore, it was imputed uh -huh. because he operated like that. Uh -huh. The word imputed means to have it credited to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you got a big zero in your bank account? Uh -huh. And, and then somebody called your bank called and said, we're giving you a hundred dollar credit. Yeah. He said, gave me a hundred dollar credit. Uh -huh. In other words, you can spend a hundred dollars and you know you had zero in there. Uh -huh. yeah. oh, come on, man. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. 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 I'm going to show it to you now. I'm going to give it to you now. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham, you ain't obeyed man law to get this. But I'm going to impute an inheritance to you. You ain't going to have to work for it. You ain't going to have to earn it. You ain't going to have to deserve it. But I'm going to put inheritance in your account. I have imputed your way of operating with me. I have imputed it for righteousness, right standing, being justified in God because you operate by faith, calling things to be not as though they were, looking at the facts and said, I know the facts, but I'm going to hope anyway. I agree with that for righteousness with me. Not the law. Because you couldn't keep that no way. All right. But you can do it. I don't know nobody who can't look at a flat tire and say, that's how he's got it. No, no. Listen to me. I don't know, this is Harris. I don't know anybody well, that can look at a flat tire and say that flat that tire ain't flat. Yeah. Now you say, well, you must be fucked <laughs> That tire by the F A C T S is plumb. Yes, sir. I don't know nobody, Brother Shaw, that can look at a flat tire and say that tire ain't flat. Well, I hope, I hope that that flat tire does not impact me. I'm fully persuaded that God made me to fix this. I'm fully persuaded that if God said it, at that time, yeah. 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 Watch this. Go to verse 23. I'm up. I'm, 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 I'm got three verses left. I'm almost there. All right. Now it was not written for Abraham's his sake alone that it was imputed to him. 
Abraham's faith, righteousness was credited to him so that he would get an inheritance. Paul says it was not for him by himself. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's in your Bible, it's, oh, it's not for him by himself. Uh -huh. It's not, Brother Moses, it's not for him by himself to him. It, it was not for his sake alone that it was credited to him. Listen, but for us, yes, sir. who was Paul writing to? The Gentiles that was in the church at Rome who were not Jews. It was for us also yes, to whom it shall be imputed, credited. If, here comes the condition, if we believe on him that raised Jesus, our Lord from the dead. Yes, if we believe in the God that raised Jesus from the dead. Can I tell you something? Jesus didn't get up by himself. All right. The Bible says the Father raised his son. All right. I believe on the Father that raised his son. I pray to the Father in Jesus' name. So he says, who was delivered for our, who, that's Jesus, who was delivered for our faces and was raised again for our right standing, justification means our right standing and our right relationship. I have become the seed of Abraham mm -hmm. when I have Abraham's type of faith. All right. Not his DNA, not his lineage. But when I believe like he believed, it is credited to my account yes, sir. that I receive the inheritance being Abraham's seed. Uh -huh. yeah. why, 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 why I'm so happy? He says, I'm going to be an heir. I'm going to inherit land. I'm going to inherit the earth. Why do you need land, Abraham? Because I'm finna multiply you. Right. You need land for your seed to prosper. Yeah. You need land. Amen. You don't understand what the inheritance is for. The inheritance is for an appointed time. Yes, sir. How, how, how you gonna be in this? You, you, you're not part of the children of, of Abraham. Jesus told them uh, Jews one time, he said, he said, no, y'all know it's my father, Abraham, and y'all were acting like this. Uh, right, right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, uh, uh no, you, you're not. If you, if you were of my father, Abraham, you would be doing things the way I'm doing. Right. Following things that be not as though they were. Yes. Not accepting failure. Amen. When God is able. Yes. I said, yes. you were able. I said, God is yes. able. Yes, he is. Now, you're going to have to go through the physical act. Of performing what God said you were able to do. All right. In other words, you won't have to take the test. Mm -hmm. Even though you believe in God is going to <coughs> give you a passing grade. You got to go in and do your part. Yes, sir. Most of the people. Uh-huh. Don't understand that in order to inherit, you have to receive the promise. We sitting around fussing, Brother Harris, about the law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt, and thou shalt, and he gave the our praise for his promise that came before the law. The law came because of a promise. All right. He promised first, and the law was part of the mechanism to get us back to why we need God in the first place. Okay. Come on, God help me. Law says, law says, law says, uh, you know, God.
God says, hey, you ain't able to take that, 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 that nut off of that bolt, a nut off the bolt. You know, yeah, you unscrew it. He said, you are able to take it off. All right. And you try with your hand and you, you can't get it because it's too tight. The law says, look at the size of the bolt and get that size wrench to fit it uh -huh. and then turn it. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. But you don't have that size wrench. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Law says you can't take it off. Yes, uh sir. -huh. Uh -huh. God says, I promise. Uh -huh. You got to understand you need me. Yeah. And when you understand you need me to get the job done, I'm going to show you how to get it right. off. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 You know, how do I get it off? He says, look in the second draw, you'll find a pair of vice grips. <laughs> Lock them on there yeah. and just apply pressure. Yeah. yeah. Law said you need a five eight. Uh -huh. Law said you need a you know a, a three quarter yeah, wrench to get it off. Uh -huh. God said I told you you were gonna be able to get it off. Yeah. Amen. I didn't tell you if you don't have a five eight you ain't gonna get it off. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he said now get back to me. Yeah. I said you were able. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you don't. The law said you disqualified because you don't have a five eight. I I, I come back to me and I told you. Apply the vice grip. Yes, okay. Sir. Now you see where God says, okay, you gonna see where the promise was more beneficial than the law. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. The promise. Yes, see, the inheritance, he said there's gonna be a new Jerusalem. Yes, sir. He said, by faith, we're citizens of the new Jerusalem. Uh -huh. We can get on that plane and we can fly to the physical Jerusalem over there in Israel right now. Uh -huh. But that ain't it. Because it ain't coming down from above. The new Jerusalem don't come down from above. I'm a citizen of the new Jerusalem spiritually. Yes, sir. Revelation has been trying to tell us. It's what we do in the spirit. It's what we can't see that can last. It's things that we cannot see. Faith is saying what you cannot see. I couldn't see by a trip. All I saw was, I don't have a free end. I don't know how I'm going to get this off. God said, I'm going to tell you something you can't see. Grab the vice grips. Yeah. Yeah. Right. By oh. faith, I am the seed of Abraham and what God promised. Abraham, it applies. Wait, wait. Oh, you said, well, you didn't work for it. It was imputed. So, for instance, imputed. It was credited. To my account. That's why people they they, they say, well, he, he ain't done this, he ain't done that, he ain't, he ain't did this, he ain't done that. What about the people on the cross? He didn't get baptized. He didn't. Get, it wasn't him. When you do all you can, God will do the rest. When you do all you can do, God will do the rest. They put it like this. If you make one step, yeah. 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 All right. Glory to God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was in a place the other day, and I'm going to say this to sit down, and they misunderstood me. I can think you can feel when people misunderstand me. I said, your gift will make room for you. And I said, me and my brother had a discussion, and I told him that instead of looking uh, just for the trained person, mm -hmm. uh -huh. you should look for the talented person. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're going to give me, that's all right. You might not get it today. Right. I was talking at a pastor's installation, and I said, 
your gift will make room for you and a pastor is a gift. Yeah. And even though you have more educated people in your congregation or in that church, and they have different positions at different levels, God will still allow your gifting to operate and be effective. Okay, okay, but I said, I said, we were talking about Deion Sanders and uh, Nick Saban and all those big schools. And we and I was telling them, I said, you know, the NBA went over to Africa and they got some guys that wouldn't even, didn't even know how to play basketball. But they saw a gift in them, talent. And they said, we'll teach them basketball. They got the talent. Or they got the gift. We're just going to give them what to apply. All right. Come on. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, here you go. Me and my brother. There's nothing wrong with my brother. It's just a discussion y'all can argue about when y'all get home. <laughs> he says, but we don't have the same weight rooms they got. And we ain't got the same uh, fields they got. They ain't level and all that. That's what I'm saying. Stuff. They ain't level. We got to have exactly what they got in order to be able to operate. I said, there's something to that, but there's also something to being given. I said, how come we without that still outperform them with that? God. <laughs> I said, for example, and I'm through, for sure. Come on, Doc. Right. I said, I got five men basketball players. You got five men. Hey, right. You said, it's five against five. That's equal, right? Yeah. I said, but on my team, I got Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And you got five well-trained men. But with my five, I got two gifted men. Yeah. Amen. One player scoring 50 points in a game. Mm, yeah. All your players averaging 20 points a game. <laughs> yes, sir. You tell me. Mm. So gifting don't make no difference. Yes, yes. Gifting makes a difference, yes. but training makes even a gifted person more effective. Yes. They can, what do you call it, uh, trip you up, throw stumbling blocks in your way, but guess what, your gift is still going to do what? They got people over, over there in your mother country running barefoot, faster and we running with Nikes on. Running more miles, more consistent. They got no water filters on their water and still drinking water. Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, we so small, we got all these chemicals drinking the same water over and over and over and over again. A thousand times. Ain't no use to look at me. You doing it to me. You're filling your water drinking right back to your house. Amen. Amen. Put chemicals in. Put your The door of the church is open. Ain't nobody clean water up like God. God sent it down through so many layers of earth and purify water and give it back to us. And we can't design a filter. Let me tell you something. If we were so good, how come we couldn't put a filter on the end of that, 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 that water line and clean up that water for them people so they can take a shower and drink the water? That's called we landed it. But God is what? Amen. And what God can't clean up down here, he'll suck it up to heaven and then let it fall back down, ready to go. Tell me God ain't able. We need water, ain't no water down here no way. He said, get your bucket out, I'm going to make it rain. If you're here, and you know you're not in right relationship with God. You can come now. Don't worry about it. Come on. Come on, say that I believe you. in Jesus who died and rose again. I believe on God, the Father. If you're here, just come on down and take a seat. If you're not in right relationship, if you're back sleeping, and you want the world to know I'm back active with the Lord again, 